All right. I'll swallow the cameras to get the inside view. So, um, let's. Uh, well, what can you tease about the next season? Uh, well, season 10, you know, we're going into a decade now, so, um, uh, you know, we're really going to be picking up where we left off, you know, what happened at the end of season 9 was probably our biggest finale we've ever had, so, um, there are huge ramifications from that, uh, not only practically, you know, where they're going to live, what's going to happen, um, but emotionally, um, you know, here are two characters who have spent the previous seven, eight years coming together as a couple, and now they've been torn apart. Again. Um, I'm sorry? Again. Again, Again. <laughs> yes. So it's really yet another test of the strength of this relationship, but also it's, it's probably the greatest um, test they've had for a couple of reasons. One, Booth has never been in a situation like this, even though he's been in war zones, he's been, you know, people have tried to kill him in, in the course of investigations, he has never been betrayed by an institution that he not only trusted but has risked his life for. So the betrayal that he is contending with now is far greater than anything he's had to deal with as a sniper, as, as um, you know, uh, somebody in the military or anyone in the FBI. So he doesn't really know what the next move is. He doesn't know who to trust. He doesn't know what uh, is in store for him when he gets out. And also, there is a huge um, uh, conspiracy, for lack of a better word, that is ongoing that wants him gone. Um, and once this investigation terminated, Brennan has to deal with all of this. She's been working tirelessly for the four months that Booth has been in prison, and we will pick the show up at a point where there has finally been a break, where they have, uh, where Brennan and the Squints, with Caroline's help, with Sweets' help, with all of the information that they've uncovered on this chip that, you know, that they got at the end of, of last season, um, that has led them to a break in the case, to, uh, of course, because it's Bones, a dead body! Um, and uh, a, a delightfully decomposed person who um, potentially has the ability to unravel what has been ongoing for decades, uh, even longer than Bones. Um, and so that's where we pick it up. Um, and uh, Brennan and the Swims are, are diving in to this. All of the information has been compiled by Angela that they have um, uh, they've gotten off this chip and and we will now see uh, the results of that and how do we get Booth out how can Booth help and what where is Booth at you know how is he going to help what is is he able to help and how much damage has been done so there's a lot to put back together far more than just just a, a, a house. <laughs> Do you think we're going to see some conflict in the, the Jeffersonian teams where they're going to take sides? Well, I think there's no real um, dispute about who the bad guys are and who the good guys are, although they don't know who the bad guys are. They know there's an entity which they must um, uh, rid themselves of. Um, they're, they're, I wouldn't say it's a conflict, but we've known Hodgins now, this will be going on 10 years, and for a conspiracy theorist who has been dismissed for the past nine years to start season 10 with the confirmation that there's a conspiracy. This is Christmas morning for Hodge. Um, and to, to resolve this is a mission, not only for Hodge, but for everybody.
Will his character play a more prominent role next season then? Well, his character will be pretty paramount in these first few episodes. Um, <clears throat> you know, we're going to have... Bones will always be Bones. You know, we will go back to the show that everybody wants. You know, it's still... Uh, we're still going to be solving murders every week, but we have to get past the huge hurdle here. And um, uh, Hodgins' help is going to be invaluable for, for that. Well, you still have the, the insertion of humor and music. Um, yes. With all the seriousness. We will not, with the, you know, we ended the last season a little darker than we usually do, but we've done that before. But I think what happens when you go for 10 years the show becomes more mature and more more real in 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 a sense so that no one's life is all dark or all funny. Um, so we will we go through this, um, seeing um, uh, essentially we're being taken into a dark place. But there's there's always humor, no matter how dark it is. And then we'll come out of it. Believe me, we're, what we're planning this year is going to be a lot of a lot of humor, a lot of a lot of things that the uh, the audience expects and wants. You know, we're, they'll be going undercover. You know, they'll be uh, um, you know in situations that are truly bizarre. You know, psychics. You know, um, so fake we'll psychics, real psychics. Again. We hope to see Cindy again. <laughs> Cindy's a little busy. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're trying to work out those schedules. We want to bring back all those members of, of the family. You know, Gibbons, Ryan, Cindy, you know, people... Stephen Fry? What? Stephen Fry? Well, yes, we'd love to, but talk about busy. He's, yeah. He's, he's very busy. So, um, I, you know, but and, and we're also... Um, adding another recurring character this year in the FBI. Um, someone, you know, the, the Jeffersonian has been well serviced by our revolving interns, and so we're, we're kind of adding a little bit more to the FBI, Some someone for Booth and Sweets and Caroline to, uh, to deal with there. Um, someone who is far more confident than anyone we've seen in that situation. And whether the confidence is all well placed or not, we'll find out. But it's it's somewhat great to um, uh, to give to Booth. You know, it's uh, uh, it, it'll give us a little more humor. There. So it sounds like Booth is back to this whole problem solved. Is there any question of whether or not this is the right place for him? Yes. Yeah. Booth will go back to work. How he goes back to work, when he goes back to work, and the, the circumstances under which he goes back to work are all up for grabs when we start. It's, um, it's going to take a while for that part of the Bones world to become comfortable with itself. But that's not to say that there isn't humor. You know, there's, um, there's enough absurdity in, the, in their circumstance to, uh, uh, to keep that going. As a producer, how hard is it to keep the show fresh after nine seasons already going into the tenth season? Well, if you had asked me that ten years ago or nine years ago, I would say it's impossible. There's no way to keep a show going for ten years. I don't know. I, I have no idea. I don't know how it's done. The only thing I can say is that the show still feels fresh. The characters are fresh. We're not bored with it. As long as we're not bored, those characters take us in directions that we, that hopefully will surprise us. And as long as we're surprised, as long as we don't sit there and say, the show has to be this. The show, we, we can't veer from this trajectory. We can't um, ever entertain 
this kind of situation for them. I think that's when a show dies. But we're kind of following these characters for the past nine years now, going on ten years. So um, as long as we're open to where they lead us, it, uh, I, I, believe me, I thought I'd be making a noose at, you know, after five years, but I'm still enjoying this world. It's, it's, it's new. They, it's, it's still, uh, you know, we're far more traditional than many shows now. But within that, the show keeps growing. So whether it ends this season or not, personally I don't think it will, um, and I think the network has no intention of it uh, ending at this point, but we're following these characters at this point in their lives. Assuming they'll live normal, healthy lives and live till there's, you know, 80 or longer, the show, as long as we keep following them, the show stays alive. And as long as their lives become, uh, stay interesting, and as long as we keep killing people, <laughs> I have no intention to stop murdering people, um, I think the show stays fresh, you know? Well, we put that pressure on ourselves to top ourselves, you know. Um, it's, I, I, I won't lie to you, it's very difficult after a, um, almost 200 episodes now to find a new way to discover a set of remains, to find a new way to um, discover a killer, find new worlds in which you know, to investigate these, these killings. And it's always shocking when those worlds appear. Um, we have an astonishing writer's room, um, head, headed by John Collier, who has been with the show for four years now. And when I'm called to go upstairs, I'm, it's always like, what? Really? Oh, God, this is great. You know, it's always another, um, it's another world that you never would have thought of. Um, and of course, we're, and, and the, the, um, the mission and the desire is never to repeat ourselves. Now, we're going to have to repeat ourselves to a certain extent, um, but hopefully it's all cloaked in another way, you know, or we acknowledge it. But it's, um, it's difficult. You know, but as I say, that it's it's the characters that keep it fresh, and you know we've been really blessed by the interns, you know, the new interns that um, uh, came this past season. I mean, it was such a gift. You know, um, you know, Dolfo, Jessica. I mean, these are just great people for us to have around, um, and. I think we've expanded our focus and have used the lives of those people, the lives of the interns, to freshen the show up as well. Um, so that we don't have to just do the same people and the same concerns over and over again. If we focus on the lives of interns or the lives of uh, supporting characters or other people in our family, that affects um, Booth and Brent in very surprising ways. Uh, and I think uh, evidence of that is the story that we did last year with Wendell, when we were getting cancer. That was a show, personally, that I, I, I love that arc, and we will be continuing that this season, because it has a profound impact. So that's how we're trying to keep it fresh. You know, that and, you know, just periodically drinking too much. I, you know, and it looks great. <laughs> Well, we're trying. We're, we're trying to get everybody back. You know, 
know, we we try to get you know, um, you know, Eris will be back, um, Clark will be back. Every, everybody. It, it is our intention to have everybody back. They are all so wonderful that frequently they visit. You know, so it's a scheduling issue a lot of times, but um, it's it's certainly our intention to keep that world as fresh and alive as, as we possibly can. You mean for them to come back and do the show? Well, they sign their deals, and, and the deals are. To be honest, I'm not exactly sure how long that is, but I think their last deal was for about two additional years. I think the, the, the initial contract with the actors goes either five or seven years. And everybody signs those because nothing goes five or seven years. <laughs> um, but I, I think. Bottom line, we're blessed because everybody wants to continue doing the show. And they want to continue doing the show. So it's a process of renegotiation for them. And that is always a uh, difficult and challenging process between the actors and the agents and the studios. Unfortunately, I have nothing to do with that. Um, but it always seems to work out. Because it's rare when we get a show that so while it's a challenge, it's, uh, it's one that always seems to be overcome. If you had to pick a, your favorite episode of the past nine seasons, what would it be? You know what? I can't do it. It's like picking your children. Yeah, it's <laughs> like when somebody says, what's your favorite movie or your favorite book? I, I've never been able to answer that question. I have lots of them. I, you know, I do have... Um, I, I, I have a lot of different episodes that, that strike me as um, important or in, in different ways. You know, there's some that are funny, there's some that are sad, there's some that are, you know, I, I felt were, were um, kind of important, for lack of a better word. So, I, oh, I, I leave that to the fans, you know, to the audience to pick their favorites and, and hopefully they're they're like me and they, they can't narrow it down to one. That's a dream that's a good dream. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much.